Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. Reading verse 18 one more time, John, 1 John, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love. Now I'm going to stop right there because Pat always has to add her two cents. And I'm going to interject as I read this one sentence. There is no fear in love. That's part of the sentence. If you are in a relationship where you fear the person you're married to or you're dating, if you fear the person that says they love you, whether they be your child or your parent or sibling, guess what? Or even a friend, a running buddy. That is not a healthy situation. That is something you should escape as if the house were on fire. You need to treat that relationship as a house that is on fire and run from it. Stop running toward it, thinking you can turn a fire into a festival it won't happen. Okay. There is no fear in love. Fear does not cohabit with love. You may think it's love, but it's not. Anytime a person makes you feel afraid, anytime a person intimidates you with fear, they make you feel as if they have power over you. They're worth everything and you're worth nothing. And every time you mess up, you're... <laughs> What are they going to think? They're going to be upset. What are they going to say? What are they going to do? I hope they don't hit me. I don't feel like having another booty whooping tonight. I'm so tired of them beating on me. I don't know what's wrong with, with them. And then the next thing you start asking yourself is, well, there must be something wrong with me because I just can't seem to get it right. Guess what, baby? You will never get it right if you're with someone who makes you feel that way. And it's not your fault. You're dealing with a sick mentality that has no idea what real love acts like. They don't even know what real love is. But perfect love casteth out fear. Now, my husband and I, for example, my husband and I were married 15 years. We could raise our voice. We could hoop. We could wolf. We could do all of the above. We never disrespected, put each other down, never fronted each other off in public or private, for that matter. We might have a heated discussion, but he wasn't intimidated by me, and I was not intimidated by him. Why? Because the love we had for each other was perfect love. It was God-given love. Human love is tainted. Human love has issues, baby. Human love is conditional. Hey, you scratch my back? Hey, I scratch your back. You stab me in the back, baby? You got hell to pay from me. Because payback is a dog. Human love is jacked up. That's the bottom line. I'm going to read the verse again. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because... Fear has torment. You hear me? It's not made perfect in love. Fear is not made perfect in love. Now, you need to know that. He that feareth, that's the, per that's the correct way to read it. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So if you are in a relationship that has you walking on eggshells, you need to take a walk, baby. Okay? Hmm. Turn around like the song uh, Street Life said. Turn around. Not Street Life. I will survive. Turn around. Keep stepping. You need to keep stepping. You do not belong in a relationship that belittles you, that intimidates you, that crushes your spirit, that uses you, that bosses you around. You don't need to be in a relationship like that. That is not 
love. I don't care how long the ding dong is. I don't care how big the boobs are. I don't care how long the hair is or how strong the face looks and the shoulders and the, and the biceps. I don't care how big and bad they may be to you or how sexy they may seem to be. I don't care how good they are in their bed and I don't care how much you think you love them. It is not worth you and your spirit being crushed. It's not worth it. Nobody's worth it. Neither your kids, nor your parents, nor your loved one, nor your lover, nor your hubby, nor your wife. Nobody is worth you feeling like a worm. God did not call you to be a doormat to anyone. Remember that. That is not his calling for you. That is called oppression. O P P R E S I O N. Is it S S? Anyway, the bottom line is, you know, it is when you spell verbally. The bottom line is, you have to make sure that you are not being oppressed. When you dread going home, when you are afraid you did something wrong, what did you do wrong this time? What will they be fussing about this time? What kind of drama is waiting behind closed doors? Guess what? You need a way of escape. And you need to ask God to make a way. Now, God might be telling you, you already got a way. You just have to take it. You may have to spend a little money. You may have to inconvenience yourself, but inconvenience beats oppression by a long shot. I would rather have to live in a shelter than to live in a palace with an abusive lover. There is no way because I love myself too much. And the reason I love myself too much to put up with abuse is because God, revealed his love to me. And once he did that baby, I didn't care what anybody said, thought, or did about me. As far as I was concerned, as far as I was concerned, from that day to this, I am somebody. And until you are convinced that you are somebody, you will be anybody's nobody. That's a sad reality. Get out while you can. Save your life. Either God has already got the door open for you, or as you go, he will make a way out of no way. Because he loves you more than he hates divorce. I don't care if you're a born-again Christian that is married to a pastor. Let that pastor keep on preaching. Let that preacher keep on bringing the message whatever they want to do. But you do not have to let that person keep beating on you. You do not have to keep letting that person call you out your name and disrespect you in public. You don't have to put up with contempt. You don't have to put up with disregard for your feelings. You don't have to put up with any of that. You don't have to put up with marital rape. I'm telling you now, you don't have to put up with him raping your children or molesting your children. Like I said, I don't care if you live in a palace. Be willing. Value yourself enough and trust God enough to be willing to live in a shelter if need be, but in safety. And don't be afraid to press charges. But you have to document everything. Every time there's an issue, call the police. Every time there's a charge, sign those papers and file a complaint. Don't back up and say, oh, well, what are the people in the church going to think? Oh, well, what are the people on my job going to think? Oh, what are my friends going to say? Screw all of them. This is your life. You don't lay yourself down and be willing to die for the sake of your image. Screw that image. You got to get your life together. 
It's your life. That's God's gift to you, not God's gift to someone else. This life belongs to you. Do you hear me? Get your heels to clicking. Hit that door and don't ever look back because God knows what you need. God knows who you are, even if you don't know who you are. And he knows how to bless you and how to take care of what belongs to him. Trust him. As the old folks used to say, he do the trust. Trust him, babe, and don't look back. In the name of Jesus, I command you to take a walk.